This lecture is going to cover determining the percentage of composition of elements and also finding out how many grams what the mass of a specific element might be within a given sample. A lot of this is rooted in things you've already seen in math class, so we're just going to apply that to stuff that you know from chemistry. Things you're going to need, periodic table, calculator, and your objective sheet. All right, so percentages. When we think about a percentage, what it is is how much of something there is out of the total. So we can talk about the percentage of students in the class that have an A. So that's how many students have an A out of the total of the class. What your percentage is on a test, how many points you earned out of the total points that the test was worth. So we're going to apply that to some stuff with chemistry here. So what we have to remember is that chemical substances have a constant formula. And changing that formula is going to change what the substance is. So if I have CO3 minus 2, that is always going to be a carbonate ion. If I change the charge, if I change the number of oxygens, it changes my substance. H2O, always going to be water. If I change something on that, it's no longer water. So, what also stays consistent or constant is going to be that molar mass that you've already found. So, my molar mass for carbonate is always going to be the same thing. My molar mass for water is always going to be the same thing because if I change something in that compound, then I'm going to have to change the mass. Therefore, the percentage of each part or the percentage of each element will also remain constant. This is going to be a very useful tool for us when we get into lab and we start trying to figure out how much of a certain element there is left or left in our sample or what we started with in our sample. It becomes very, very helpful. All right, so some examples here. So when we are determining percentages... So from our molar mass and the mass that we have of each element, we can determine the percentage that we have of each element. Okay, we're going to break it down a little bit to make that make some sense. Um, but the formula or the equation that you're going to use is you're going to take the mass of each element and you're going to divide it by the molar mass. Then to make something a percentage... That's when we multiply by 100. So let's look. Okay, we're looking at calcium carbonate here, CaCO3. Um, we're not going to spend time solving this here, but your molar mass of calcium carbonate is 100.09 grams per mole. If you are not sure how I got that, that's when you need to go back and look at finding your molar mass. Because without being able to correctly find the molar mass, this is going to be very challenging for you. All right, so we're looking at calcium here. So looking at our formula, if we take the mass of each element divided by the molar mass. So if you're looking at your periodic table, in calcium carbonate, we only have one calcium. Your molar mass of calcium, 40.08. So Yours is rounded a little bit differently, just like I said on the molar mass one, as long as we're right about in that same ballpark. And we're going to divide that by our molar mass. Do that first, and then multiply by 100. So take a minute, type that in your calculator. Should get something very close to 40.04%. 
All right. Now let's look at carbon. I only have one carbon, so we're going to go straight from that periodic table. 12.01. Divide it by the molar mass. Multiply it by 100. Go ahead and type that in your calculator, see what you get. eleven point nine nine percent or twelve percent either one of those would be okay um, when you're doing these go ahead and just do two numbers after the decimal that'll be just fine and oxygen now I have three oxygen so I can't just do sixteen divided by one hundred point zero nine I need to do the total of what I have for oxygen so I'm going to take my sixteen times three first and then I'm going to divide that by 100.09. Put these in brackets. Then we multiply by 100. Go ahead, type that in, see what you get. forty seven point nine six percent now something that you can check yourself with is adding up these percentages so what should we want our total to be of these percentages you should want it to be 100 because we're calculating the total for calcium carbonate we're just adding up the calcium plus the carbon plus the oxygen so the total should be 100 so if we add these up 40.04 plus 11 point, do this with me right now, 11.99 plus 47.96 gives me 99.99%. Don't get too much closer than that there, do we? So that's fine because that's a rounding thing, okay? So if you would have done, if you wrote down 12% on that carbon, you got 100% exactly. Um, Anywhere within a percentage, so 99 to about 101, you're okay. If you're getting answers 96% or 104, something is wrong, okay? Which means you need to go back and look, did you use the correct mass? Did you find the correct molar mass? Did you use all of the oxygens if you have more than one of them? If, did you use all of the hydrogens if you have more than one of them? So double check yourself because that's a way. If you're here, that's pretty close to 100. It, you're, looking about, you're looking to be pretty safe with your answer. All right. So make sure you have these values available, these percentages here. Because now... I could ask you how many grams of each of these do I have in a certain sample. So how many grams of carbon are present in, a, in 300 grams of calcium carbonate? So a few steps that we need to take here. You have to determine the percentage of carbon in calcium carbonate, which we already did. But if you have not done that prior, you would need to do that first. And then step two, you're going to multiply. But you're going to multiply in decimal form. So remember when we were doing stuff with finding the average atomic mass and you had to change those percentages of abundance into decimals? Same thing here. Anytime you're working with percentages and you're trying to do math with them, you're going to want to change them into decimal form. So... We have 11.99% to change this into decimal. We just move it over one, two spots. So we have 0.1199. And then we just multiply that by 300. We're multiplying it by the mass that we have. So doing that, 0.1199 times 300 
should give me 35.97 grams. Kind of depends on what you did on your decimals there on that carbon if you used 12 or not. Units, grams of carbon. So if I wanted to find calcium, all I would do is take my calcium percentage, which was 40.04. This would be 0.4004, and I'm going to multiply that by 300. And that's going to give me 120.12 grams of calcium. Okay, so just make yourself aware that this is an option as well. So this 300 could be anything. It could be a little number. It could be a big number. So right now we're like, oh, this, this looks like it's a reasonable number. But if I had point, point 0.30 grams of calcium carbonate, I would have a much, 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 much smaller amount of carbon at the end. Do not be intimidated by very, very little numbers or by very, very big numbers. That's why we did all that stuff with scientific notation way back in the beginning. All right, you may see th some things with hydrates. So what percentage of potassium permanganate dihydrate is, comes from water? So what you have to remember in this is this is your water. Dihydrate means 2H2O. So we're not just finding the percentage of one part, we're finding the, or one element, we're finding the percentage of water, which means we have to account for two H2Os. So go ahead, we got to find our um, molar mass here. So remember, potassium permanganate, KMNO4. I'm going to pause this just a second. You find your molar mass, and then start it back up once you've found that. All right, when I'm doing something with hydrates for this, what I would do, find that ionic compound first. So for potassium permanganate, it's 158.04 grams per mole. And then for water, remember one water is going to give you 18.02. We've got to multiply that by 2, which is 36.04. So now to find the water out of the total, we're going to have to add these two things together. So if I add these together, I get 194. 0.08. So that's my total for potassium permanganate dihydrate. And now to find the percentage of water, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to divide the amount of water I have by the total, just like I divided the calcium by the total of calcium carbonate, or I divided the carbon by the total. I'm going to do the same thing here. So if I take 36.04 and I divide that by 194, 0.08. It's going to give me 18.57%. Now I could use this and turn to ask how many grams of water, what my mass of water was in the sample. You would do the same thing that we did before. Something else you might see, and it's, it's very similar to what we're looking at now in terms of hydrates, it's not really with the percentages, but it could be a starting point for a problem. What mass of water was evaporated off of a 65.67 gram sample of sodium bromate trihydrate if 45.23 grams of sodium bromate are left after heating? So I'm starting out with this sample 
of sodium bromate trihydrate. Now, what happens when you heat a hydrate, most oftentimes your water is going to be heated off. Okay, it's going to be drived off, it's going to be evaporated. So what you're left with is the ionic compound that you were bonded with. We're left with the sodium bromate. So if I started out with 65.67 grams, and I am left with 45.23 grams, what's the difference between this? The difference between these two is the water. The water is the only thing that I got rid of. So all you have to do is subtract, and if you subtract this, you're left with 20.44 grams of water. Now, this could be something that could come into play when you're trying to find the percentage of a hydrate within a compound or if you're given the percentage and you need to find the water that came off. So just kind of keep that in mind that when you have a sample of a hydrate and that water is driven off, all you're left with is the ionic compound. So the difference between those two is how much the water made up. All right, we're going to do a practice problem here. Write this down, pause it when you are done, come back, we'll check your answer. All right, so what is the percentage present of each element, so not just one, in a sample of nitrous acid? So remember, us comes from ite, so this is from nitrite, so HNO2 is your compound that we're looking at. Finding the molar mass of that, you should get 47.02. Remember, if a little bit is off on that decimal, it's really okay. Um, so then take each element, divide by the total. So for hydrogen, we should get 2.15%. Nitrogen, 29.8%. Oxygen, 68.06%. I hope that what you did is you checked your answer. Go ahead and add up your percentages. If you got the same ones that I did, you're looking at 100.01%, which is right where we want to be. Um, if you're off a little bit, maybe you wrote a number down wrong. Maybe you only used one of the oxygens. Go back and check. Those are some things to look for. Um, this is one spot that a lot of mistakes get made with um, when you have more than one. So instead of, so maybe you did 16 divided by 47, that would give you an incorrect answer because there's two oxygens. Maybe, maybe all of this stuff right here is correct, but when you went to write your answers down, you wrote 27.8 instead of 29.8. Those are going to make a huge difference. So make sure that you're writing down exactly what you see. All right, so one more for you to try. So you're going to take the information that you got on the last problem, and we want to find out how many grams of each element are present in a 78.9 gram sample of nitrous acid. So I want the mass or the grams of each element in a 78.9 gram sample. So go ahead, pause it, take a look, and come back when you're done. All right, so here are your answers. 1.7 grams of hydrogen, 23.51 grams of nitrogen, 53.70 grams of oxygen. Now what you had to remember was you had to take those percentages, so your 2.15% of hydrogen needed to become 0 0.0215 before you multiplied it. So if you got numbers that were much bigger than the ones that I have, your decimals are over a little bit, this is the reason. Okay, so make sure that you're always doing that conversion. One way you can just double check your answer here, if you add up all of your values, so add these three together, 
Mine gives me a total of 78.91 grams. Look where that number came from. If you got something like 7,890 grams, that's because you didn't move your decimal. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea. That gives you another way to check yourself. That's the benefit of this section is it's very easy to check yourself to make sure you're getting the right answers, okay? So take that extra three seconds, type it in your calculator, make sure you're getting 100%. Make sure you're getting the correct grams. It's going to benefit you in the end. So go ahead, finish those practice problems with the molar mass in determining the percentages, and let me know if you need any help. Good luck.